Hello. So I just want to thank Steven and I want to thank Susan, Oscar, Dorothy, my partner Brian, and my extended poetry family, uh, David and Erica, for making the trip. Um, and I'll read it for about 15 minutes. Um, I'll start with poems from my new book, uh, Language Arts. And it actually has some Oscar-related works in it, so I think I'll definitely read those, and then I'll read some new poems. Um, yeah, and the uh, speech that Stephen was mentioning, I mean, it's something that was delivered orally and never written in English, so really it only exists in translation, which is another interesting element of that. Um, so to me, it seems like endlessly available as a material. Um, but this first poem is called Marble Harbor. Can you hear me okay, or should I move this a little closer? Sort of janky. Okay, yeah. Okay, maybe that's good, yeah. Is that easy? Yeah, is that okay? Okay, great. Uh, this first poem is called Marble Harbor for Bill Berkson. The apartment feels like newspaper headquarters, orange light facing off the brick. It's Clark Kent coming into work. We call him the poet as he brings us the unknown, anything that possesses him. A second castle drawing, ink, engravings of Gonsborg, abacus, earplugs, empty spools, slivers, a gold mine outside a mansion under a palm tree. Lust is the main distraction I find. It seems to interrupt the flow. December the 22nd, colored by and by. It's like that in the crawl space. Lines are more ribbon than wood. One does see the Sphinx, but the Sphinx stands for a secret, gods or circulating forces. I never knew anyone with a profundity of tact that came close. We all know we are just playing house. O oh, blessed plain, O oh, pointed chasm, new feudalism, distillation of a night the poets would pay for, Amish apple butter and snow we kept for you in our freezer, sweeping my unruly works into a book laid side by side, I just see dollar signs, a love whose burning light shall warm the winter night, that's all. Closer to my face here. Okay. Um, this is called Paris. I can disappear before your eyes, killing you. I slay you with my eyes, you disappear. That's how I would remember that line and how to write, actually, certainly, stupidly. Only the ladies strumming language. They are not women, they are knights wrestling these lines off the back of a knife. They have a second life spent in stone and so attended. Bomb the bridge to heat my hands, work their handlers in order, go to the movies all day, only to collapse and focus, to finally hand off my faded flower. Caring and pointed, she brought me up and loosened my mind toward the checks and imbalances and cameos in Lucifer's Grotto. I remember a full-on Scottish plaid suit, the Gravitron sexodrome growing out of Apollinaire's grave, empty balcony seats, operatic little fills, the poems of a multi-billionaire, a vow of silence, fine and mellow, all the things you are. I guess this is another French one. Um, it's called Verlaine Blues. The rain sweeps through town and I'm bleeding in pain, endless harping on strings of the rain. Mixed blood and live copper wire stepping down among the dead gray leaves. The flowers can't face me with their heads snapped and nodding out. I'm so sick of the rain, it soaks to my heart, bottomless sea of Galilee, banging around in the dark, blazing forth as an open grave. I am reborn upon this downpour of despair. I am embarrassed. 
I can't stand the rain. It falls upon the young, disenchanted and desperate, upon those dressed in black in mourning. Go away from my door. I've got time alone and trouble for days. Sometimes I get the blues when it rains. Uh, this is called Panels for the Walls. This had a lot of lines from ancient Chinese poetry that was translated actually by Kenneth, Kenneth Rexroth. Um, Panels for the Walls. Leave the long fall between us, peak after peak. Here were my paints and there were my powders. And then I was drunk and we lost each other. My shadow tumbled after soaking cinnamon leaves in the lake of the moon. The roll of the damned drum calls me to duty, the dice in the light of the lamp. I hear a stone gong. I lean full weight on my slender staff, yellow leaves shaken and petals confused to my garden. The hard road is written to music, how lovely locks in bright mirrors in high chambers the moon shows further, a gold and silver terrace. The northern grass is blue as jade, a dream venting in the pit of heaven. What was the other one? Oh, yeah. An Emotional Memoir. I walked along the mouth of a black river in Zurich. I nearly froze. Remembered please and thank you. I sometimes had to point and could not look down. It may have been a bed laid for a rail railway track. I had traveled sleeplessly, still excited to get away in final observation of my emotions. A friend I hadn't seen since childhood had asked me here. We had been facing the same two-way mirror for years without knowing it. He had written to me about my poetry, so I hammered back the emerald tablet in return. We were both helpless to showing the edge of two opposites drawn together, romancing the edge of Assyrian robes, re-entering the embassy. We came on with almost embarrassed affection, so easy to talk, his wife resembled Sharon Tate. They had three children, you would never guess. How grateful I felt to be lost among lopsided spinning leaves. It was a passage with the usual skull change, some morning glory seeds I had figured into a brick to block my windpipe. I found its rightful fit and it dissolved. It only reinforced the deep Atlantic green that later fell from gold in Sacre Coeur fighting off the torrents of green blood through my poems, my eyes. It was no fair. In gray square cut button up coat, I don't have ideas, I get to work. No talent, no genius, but divination, painted dusk. And these are newer things, unbound poems here. Uh, this is called Green Rainbow Song. Hung up on my hearing and deep in whose playbook, one too many nights and never a blackout. Doing the best I can, only a man. It hurts me too. Blues in the night, Verlaine blues. Sitting here thinking a blues for Anne. All nerves and mine the most dirty, unhurried afternoon jags. A freshly penned lyric for sinking to autumnal Atlantean shade. I wish us more luck. I wish my little tiger lily sheltered in a clear crystal box being carried. Green pearl-handled mallets edging the enunciation toward a new burn. The chamber of maiden thought is metered. Big fields, villagers, stars on the backlot blues. It's the smoke spot I shade softest, a curve so tight it's really blind. The chamber gives way to the word, in this case, mine. <laughs> uh, 
um, after the oracle. First time in a long time, the depth of impression is straight ahead. Overall condition noted, continued. Change the angle of approach. The beam always widens and lightsabers surround the doorways to save us. I'm turning the poem around in my window for joy and there is no text begging to drop by, allowing for such a thing so hot, that setting sun, rocks held by taut strings. The silk of furniture is burned alive by a futurist. <laughs> a linoleum cut of a gash. Clean the spit valve, not often. Kit caught his bus, Emeryville, before a train to Portland to read. Tell them all hi. I cut the small black shadow of a jet and am moving it about the sky in the postcard. Mount Olympus, blue, Bailey Range from Hurricane Ridge, right here with you after all night. Ode for Nine Voices. Earth seems the haloed side of a flat stone, flaunting its gold-blooded, diamond-back secrets, that we are all one, that we haven't the privilege or time to change our minds. I chance on a liar to liven the lights, to bear down up my coast on rims to roll out. The mirror and corridor both have voices, they are without attendant siren. I was a Bellinus separatist poet, where the epigrams say more when cannibalized, held aloft in a fog of queer voicings, when the waves are altered to approximate the kiss and death and haunting in the woods behind the house. We shall restage Apollinaire's last hot march into evening air. Excuse my fragile spiral, Excuse my horse cock unveiled in Byzantium. No longer alone in the hotel casino made famous by poetry, lashing every mixed feeling on black against the walls. The most incisive jagged script for twelve hands. One is trapped in vocoder delay and dates horribly. The first spasm blanks in the guns of the trees, each line peeled and bitten, brushed out from its paper. The poets in glowing lab coats, expository prose, lightning white arms crossed with strobes. I turn my spade to the inset language, turning up late every other night to demonstrate my own take on the sonnets, the lyric, even the most dividing, arrested arts of love. And this is a L.A. poem. It's called Tomorrow Night. Peter's mind is branded outlandish genius, an emollient golden gas that shrooms to save its life. Oh, high-waisted demons in legion, crawling in tonight from over the hill, wires aglow round the stem of a rose, full-on lifted from the jizz-meth hymnal, Lines taken home, retooled for future auto harp outfits. In storm blue ribbon, felled net of flies. I got the words in shape to hold out in front, to wail away on those bridges. And the dulcimer kicked down the stair, unawares, was underwriting everything. The numbers and the fix, that little spot Algeria on sunset, nothingness. I got us locked in and was sort of asked to leave. Nicely hammered, very true. I stayed in my suit and stood in the street, silent as a star fallen, dead of exposure. This is called Satin Glass for Julian Poirier. Set desire is a long drip, a knocked out quarry. 
American Constantine smokeless powders, bolt and star, a grate in mint green. Copper pins, suspended palace of lovers rejoined, of gliding by in boredom, unbecoming huge door in the wall, too smart, phoned in, not dead enough, swig of the yellow eye pressed, electric organ I asked, men who did flower the lights, violet in lime on gray. Noises, I remember, were minerals forming their one mountain, tears that quivered in rage, pulling into flame. And I'll read uh, two more poems. Uh, this is called The Wigwam. A great form for Oscar, I think. Uh, I join each frame by hand and smooth them myself. Some mornings I have to stop short. If I can't run a comb through my hair, I'm no good to anyone except for the poets. Dipping into plans for clear portals, a breath between worlds. I will only know revolution in real life where plans laid are still kept. A big reveal in store as I shift the reading onto legs, drop my collarbone out front. It's a long range barrel particular to hours of tinkering. My morning shed is kept warm despite when having left. I can draw a cloth over its roof from the inside pulley. The fog turns to white faking jade determinants Blown clouds, a fat razor wet on its side, forms a helmet in its filthy stealth manner of light. Contented to carve onto whose dressing screen, soon junked, later resurfaced as a delicate carriage house of an uncollected. Oh yeah. Um, this is called The Real Contents of a Street Poet's Suitcase. <laughs> Tiny dented copper spools, an elephant gun, clean underwear, red garland records, red in Bluesville, red alone, a pair of counterfeit Vachel Lindsay cuckoo clocks, <laughs> empty pocket rocket for net, Cerulean rabbit's foot keychain, turquoise money clip, 17 cents, stained satin pajamas, golden sardine with underlined lines and figures, Apollinaire never hiked in paper mache woods, Apollinaire never slept all night in an ice house. Thank you.